You know, I realize you might be wondering how our church is processing all of the requests we're receiving from so many different entities in our community about using our facilities right now. And I would just encourage all of us to pause and say, thank the Lord that we're even in that position. God has given us so many sacrificial church members who year after year after year have given faithfully so that we could have all kinds of facilities that are of a special use right now during a community emergency. So let's pause and just praise the Lord that we're in this situation. Coupled with we have so many uh, men and women in our church who have worked so hard just to love our neighbors and to try to meet community needs and to establish relationships with community leaders and community social service providers. I'm so glad for all of the work that you have invested in that because when there's a time of emergency, the, the community has to decide, now, now who can we turn to if we have a need? And I'm glad for all of the, the relational capital that has been built by men and women from our church who just love to serve. Well, what kind of requests are we receiving? The challenge is nobody knows for sure what the spike is gonna look like in Tippecanoe County. And nobody knows for sure what could happen if our resources are especially stretched. And so everybody is having to do um, second and third and fourth tier emergency planning. And we respect that. And so we have all kinds of persons from um, our county offices and from our city offices, from the hospitals who are contacting us about all sorts of things. Things like, well, what if the homeless shelters become filled? Would faith be willing to become a, an overflow for those who are homeless? Or what if domestic violence becomes more of a problem because of this quarantine? Would faith be willing to be an overflow for domestic violence? What if there was a situation where um, there were hospital employees who were concerned about going home in between their shifts? Would faith provide housing or some sort of a shelter for hospital employees? We've been contacted by organizations about potentially being a place where COVID-19 testing might occur, and just on and on and on. So you might say, well, how does a, a church like Faith make decisions like that? Well, there's a phrase that has guided us over the years, and it's this, say yes unless you have to say no. We believe that um, what has been entrusted to us belongs to the Lord, and we want to share it every way that we possibly can. And so one of the first things that we do as we have these various requests is, is this uh, entity under whom we should be working? Do we have an established relationship with them already? Are they a well-known community leader or community service provider? So when the county commissioners call us or when somebody from the mayor's offices call us or from one of the hospitals or an established social service provider, if it's somebody that we know, we're much more likely to say yes, but we're going to be very careful about some of the other requests that might come in because we want to be sure that we're functioning under the authority of our elected officials and our health care leaders. But assuming that we've done that work, if the request has been vetted, then um, I'll tell you exactly the way we say it. In fact, I just had this conversation with a hospital administrator the other day. Um, we believe that Everything that has been entrusted to us, it belongs to God. Now, all of our buildings, all of our resources, our staff, we, we don't hold it tightly as if it's ours. It's one of the first principles of stewardship. God owns everything. It, we own nothing. And so we hold whatever we have very, very lightly. And we want to say yes, unless we have to say no. And so we're hoping and praying that a lot of these second, third, fourth tier emergency plans will not have to be put into effect here in Tippecanoe County. But I just want you to know that we're having some delightful conversations with community leaders. One person yesterday, she actually just broke down in tears as we were talking about how our church would be more than happy to, to serve them. I, I could tell she was under a lot of tension in her job and, and understandably so. And, then right at the end of the conversation, she said, hey, I, I just need to ask to be sure that I'm reporting it to my supervisors. If we had to do what you just said Faith would be willing to do, 
how much would that cost? Well, you know the answer to that question, don't you? The answer is absolutely nothing. We're more than happy to share all that we have with those in our community in need. And friends, I just want to say to you, praise God. And praise God that we have the privilege and I'm very thankful for a church family that sacrificed year after year after year and worked hard to build the facilities, worked hard to build the relationships. You never know when an emergency is going to come, but you want to have those resources and relationships in place so we can just let our light shine in a way that honors the Lord and draws others to him.